Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of Behind the Sawdust, our weekly-ish vlog about what goes on when the cameras are off at the two Stumping Ups Woodworking Journal shops. Guess what? It's tool time! I have to admit, I love tools. I love shopping for them, I love using them, I love trying new tools and learning about interesting tools and even giving away tools. In fact, if you stick around until the end of this video, I'm going to give away some more tools because everyone loves tools. Why am I going on about tools? Because a while back we did a special tool episode of Behind the Sawdust where I showed you five tools that I thought woodworkers should know about. The problem is, I think there are way more than five tools you should know about. My shop is loaded with awesome tools and we get more all the time. So I think we may make this a regular thing. Maybe every month or so we'll do a cool tools episode where I'll pick four or five that I think are worth showing you. These tools may be some that I've been using for years, or they may be some that I just got my hands on. The only criteria is that they be cool tools. If you want more information about any tools you see, I'll just put links in the notes below the video for you to check them out. Ready to get started? Let's look at this month's cool tools. First up is a tool I've been using for several years here in the main workshop, and it came in handy this past week because I was doing some power carving which left a big mess of sawdust on the floor. Now I could grab a broom, but that would involve bending over to use the dustpan, and I'm far too lazy for that, so I prefer to suck up my shavings. The problem is I hate shop vacs. The filters clog and the exhaust on the back shoots air into dust that's on the floor behind the machine and fills the air with it. I do use them, I mean don't get me wrong, but if I have a lot of chips like this, I prefer a different method. These accessories are sold by Rockler under their Dustrite brand name. They make all sorts of different Dustrite dust collection products, but this set in particular has really been handy over the years. It's a big 4 inch vacuum wand with a special hose that attaches to your dust collector. The hose itself hangs on a rack on the wall of my shop, and it's all nice and neat because unlike regular dust collection hose, this one is collapsible. When you grab it off the wall, it stretches out up to 28 feet long, depending on which length that you buy. On the end, I attach one of their quick connect handles. They've actually changed the shape of the handle, and the hose itself is blue now. Like I said, I've had mine for many years, but it still works the same way. The handle slips onto the vacuum wand, and you're off sucking up wood chips. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Do I really want to suck everything up off my floor and into my dust collector? Well that depends on your dust collector. If you have a cyclone or even a trash can separator attached to your system, you should be fine. If not, you do want to avoid sucking up anything that will damage your impeller, such as large pieces of wood and especially not metal that may spark and set your dustbin on fire. There is a plastic screen on the foot section, which will keep big parts out, but it does cause it to clog up more. So I keep two foot pieces around, one with a screen for when I'm not sure what I'm sucking up, and the other for maximum airflow when I want it. They also make a smaller handheld one for using on the workbench. This is really handy, even if you do use a shop vac sometimes, because it's just easier to grab than getting the vacuum out. Just be careful you don't suck up your tools, because there's no screen on this one. When I'm finished, the hose collapses right back into its rack. Or I can take the hose to a different part of the shop. The quick connect ends make it fast to hook it up to different machines, and the collapsible hose is great because it only has to be extended as long as you need it, making it versatile for all sorts of different shop situations. Like I said, I've been using the dust right hose and fittings for years, and I can tell you without a doubt that it's the best dust collection hose I've used, so you may want to check it out at the link in the notes below the video. In the meantime, you're probably wondering about that power carving I was talking about. Well, we're making a whole video about that project, but I did want to show you a little bit now because it gave me a chance to use a different tool. These are carbide carving burrs made by a company called Sabretooth. I've done some power carving in the past, but always with high speed steel burrs. Carbide is way better in my opinion, because they have this innovative porcupine design that makes them extremely efficient at removing wood. They won't clog up like the high speed steel ones, they don't scorch the wood, and they don't get dull nearly as quickly. I use them on the more detailed parts of the carving, which happen to be an eagle based on an old folk carving that I saw in an antique sale. You'll see the finished carving in a few days. 
I did find that the carbide burrs took some practice. Because they can be so aggressive, you really have to keep an eye on what you're doing. You can remove a lot of wood fast, which is a good thing as long as it's in the right places. A variable speed rotary tool or a power carver is a must. By lowering that speed down, you get a lot more control over the tool. You have no problem at all. The burrs come in coarse and fine grits, but even the fine is still pretty rough. These are for shaping, not for finishing. I had to follow up with some sanding, but I really have to say that these were a pleasure to use compared to my old steel burrs. I'm sure you'll see more of them in various projects down the road. I also know that Mustache Mike wants to get his mitts on them for touching up his scroll saw fretwork, so we'll have to get some more to share between the two shops. I also want to try out some of the other shapes and sizes they make. They actually have quite a variety on their website. I'll link to it in the notes below the video. Meanwhile, I recently got my hands on another tool that I'd been anxious to try for some time now. It's the Drillnado Drill Press Dust Collection System. This thing caused a lot of excitement when it first came out because there really hasn't been a perfect solution for dust collection on the drill press. Until recently, I just used this flex hose that can be bent in various positions and there's a special fitting for the end. If I sit it next to my work, it does a pretty good job. My biggest complaint though is that it gets in the way of the workpiece sometimes and it only collects about half of the larger chips. I'll put a link to this setup in the notes below, but let's see how the Jewel NATO compares. There are two different sizes, the regular and the XL. The XL worked best with my drill press, which is a very typical Taiwan made floor standing model that you find at places like Harbor Freight and under different brand names. The body of the drill NATO attaches to the machine's spindle and a plastic bellows slips over the bit and pops in place. I was a little worried because the bellow seems to hang loosely on mine. I prefer for a better fit, but I also know it can't be too tight or it won't go on and off easily. And since you have to pop it off whenever you change your bit, it had better be easy to do it. Still, I thought mine was way too loose and a couple of times it even fell off while I worked. It is worth noting though that I tried two different drill NATOs, both the regular and the XL, and the bellows on the regular version fit just fine. So it may be that this one XL model that I got had a little bit of a problem. Another thing I was worried about was how the bellows would obstruct my view of the work, but I really didn't find that to be a problem at all. I could see clearly what I was doing. That said, I could not use my laser guide with this on the drill press. It doesn't bother me because I find my laser to be too inaccurate and fiddly anyway, but if you have a laser that you like to use, that's something to keep in mind. By far my biggest concern though was how would it perform while hooked up to a dust collector. A shop vacuum produces a lot of static pressure, so it doesn't need a lot of airflow to work, but a dust collector is a different machine. It has low static pressure and so it needs a lot of airflow. And since the drill NATO reduces the inlet down to a very small space around the spindle, I was skeptical about how much suction I would really get. But I was pleasantly surprised. There was still enough airflow around the spindle to collect 100% of the dust from my bit. But that's the fine stuff, right? What about big Forstner bit shavings? Guess what? It clogged up pretty quickly. The bigger shavings seemed to be too much for it. I was actually a little frustrated for a minute, but then I realized that the problem may be the way I was using my Forstner bit. I'm always in a hurry, so I hogged down on the bit, which makes these giant shavings. I found that if I slowed my feed, I got smaller chips and the drill NATO had no problem at all keeping up. It worked equally well with both a shop vac and a dust collector attached. So I can rush all I want with regular bits, but I have to slow down a little when I'm using large Forstner bits. I suppose that's not that big of a deal. Now I admit that I am unlikely to use dust collection every time I go to the drill press. It's just not that messy of a tool, especially if you're only drilling a few holes. But when I have a lot of holes to drill, I really don't see a problem with slipping that little bellows over the bit and saving myself the effort of having to sweep or vacuum up the shavings later. So this may be a tool that is a real time saver for some people and less so for others. I'll put a link in the notes below the video for those of you who want to check it out. I have one more cool tool to show you. This is another one that I've used around the shop for quite a while now. It's Empower's 7-in-1 router base. I love this thing because it does all sorts of stuff. We made a short video about it a year or so ago, which I'll link to in the notes. But I just want to show you one feature that I think is really cool. I'm going to cut a dado to fit this piece of wood into a slot in this plywood, but I don't have a bit that's the right size. 
so I'm going to use the router base's micro adjustable feature. The base slips right onto your router using the slots where your factory edge guide would normally go, which makes it really easy to take off and put back on. I'm going to attach a fence accessory to the bottom of the base with a couple of screws. And I've set it to the distance that I want the dado to be from the edge of my workpiece. One thing that I've noticed about this tool is that there are a lot of little screws and accessories that you have to keep track of. I haven't lost any yet, even though I've had this thing for quite a while, but I'm really careful to put everything back when I'm done with it. Anyway, I route my slot from left to right, keeping the fence against my edge. Of course, I know this dado isn't wide enough for the mating piece, so I'm going to turn the micro adjuster dial, which moves the router itself in relation to the base. I can do this a little bit or a lot, whatever I need, then I make another pass widening my dado. Because the micro adjuster is so precise, I can make very fine adjustments until I get a perfect fit. The same process would work with a clamp-on edge guide if I want to cut the dado in the center of a really large workpiece. It's just one of the really handy features of this router base. I honestly love the thing. If you'd like to see more, check out the video link in the notes below. And there's also a link to the base itself on Amazon if you'd like to read some more reviews. Speaking of videos we did in the past, just this past week we made a video about how to sharpen your own router bits. I'll link to that below too. But to help you get started, we're giving away three of the same diamond sharpening sets from Trend that were used in that video. These sets are awesome and you'll be seeing us sharpen all sorts of different woodworking tools with them in the next few issues of Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal. So I'll randomly choose three of our email subscribers and send them a set. If you're already an email subscriber, you're already entered. If you aren't, go to stumpingups.com and subscribe. It's that simple. You'll be entered into all of our tool giveaways now and in the future, and we never send junk mail. While you're there, be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, full of tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com. Then you can sit back, have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend.